There were two deaths this week at the Grand Canyon. One man accidentally went over the edge while taking a selfie. The Grand Canyon is one of the most popular national parks in the United States, and just the mention of it conjures up images from movies, descriptions of the landscape from relatives who have been there, and other travel tales. Many of the old myths and sacred sites associated with the Grand Canyon remain unexplained to this day. The canyon's walls are made of rocks that have been here for millions of years and hold mysteries from a time that we may never be able to fully comprehend. The Grand Canyon has always been strange, but now that so many other kinds of creatures call it home as well, it's become an even stranger enigma. A shocking discovery has been made in the Grand Canyon, and it has scientists running for their lives. What terrifying discoveries have been made in the Grand Canyon? How could this possibly affect everything? Let's find out. The mere fact that dinosaurs existed has always fascinated us. It's pretty remarkable that the Grand Canyon has given rise to the notion that even more amazing and inconceivable species have trod the Earth's surface. Imagine a long forgotten person suddenly appearing in front of your eyes, just the way the dinosaurs did. The planet Earth is still hiding a lot more mysteries, and scientists are still scouring the globe for clues to reveal them it is understandable why the Grand Canyon is one of the most important sites in both the U.S. and the rest of the world. Known as the Basement of History, it is a representation of rock layers, each of which represents a certain time since the Earth's formation. With every visit, this natural wonder continues to captivate both scientists and visitors. Hikers and adventurers travel through portions of this history every day without realizing it, and this place is home to thousands of years of history that explorers will never see. It can be challenging to pinpoint just why the Grand Canyon is so significant given the amount of hype that surrounds it, the advent of Instagram tourism, and the prevalence of unreliable information sources. After all, neither in terms of depth nor in terms of length, the Grand Canyon is the greatest canyon in the world. The two biggest gorges in the world are Pakistan's Indus Gorge and Tibet's Yarlung Tsang Po, although hardly anyone has ever even heard of them. Since what they see as the beginning of time, 11 Native American tribes have had close ties to the canyon and have been farming, building homes, hunting, and residing around the rims. Many tribes' origin myths and narratives of heaven and hell have references to the Grand Canyon. At the bottom of the canyon, the Colorado River is said to be a sacred location where worries and burdens can be spiritually washed away. Visitors should be aware that the canyon is more than just a park. Many Native Americans have a strong historical and spiritual connection to the area. The Grand Canyon has been used for a variety of things since it was first discovered, but because of this American success tale, the canyon has mostly escaped damage. Many of the first travelers to the Grand Canyon had grand plans on how to make money from it. The Grand Canyon was on a path significantly different from the one we see today, from a failed mining venture to building hotels on the rim. Fortunately, Teddy Roosevelt was a different early visitor who developed a deep appreciation for the Grand Canyon and subsequently said, you cannot improve on it, but what you can do is keep it for your children, your children's children, and all who come after you as the one great sight which every American should see. In response, Roosevelt took action, designating the Grand Canyon as a national monument and later as the present day national park. To restore the Grand Canyon to its most natural state, they demolished lodges and other buildings that were still surviving on the rim. His forethought allowed the Grand Canyon to become a representation of the vast areas of the Western United States. The Grand Canyon is a massive American landmark that is well known around the world. It is the only American representative of the seven wonders of the natural world and a UNESCO National Heritage Site. Contrary to popular belief, the Grand Canyon is home to a lot more species. On your adventures to the canyon, you might encounter elk, lizards, brown bats, squirrels, and other bird species. However, there are several pretty unique species that are totally dependent on the canyon. The California condor, the largest bird in North America with a nine-foot wingspan, nearly became extinct in the 20th century, prompting the federal government to declare it as an endangered species in 1967. In 1996, six baby condors were released into the wild near Grand Canyon as part of a breeding effort that had started in 1983. 
with 71 condors recently counted in the Grand Canyon region and 195 birds in the wild in the United States, the reintroduction program was a huge success. The title of largest belongs to yet another creature that depends on the Grand Canyon. The American bison is the biggest land mammal in North America. The bison found a place to call home on the north rim of the canyon after being herded down from the north in the early 1900s where, curiously enough, there are large grasslands and woodland ideal for the bison. The canyon serves as the bison's tiny oasis in the middle of arid land. Since they can be found all across the southwest, the rocks of the Grand Canyon are not particularly special. Two other features of the canyon, however, contribute to the Grand Canyon's significance as a location for geological research. The arrangement of the rocks along the canyon walls is the first. Finding a massive rock column that has been maintained so well and compares to the Grand Canyon is unusual. This makes the canyon one of the best places to study geology since it allows researchers to examine literally millions of years of Earth's history in one location. One of the biggest mysteries in geology is also found in this sequence. Geologists have been able to identify two distinct rock columns, a bottom column that was deposited around 2,000 million years ago and a top column that was deposited between 550 and 250 million years ago. To the surprise of many geologists, the center of the rock is missing. The location of the missing rock is a topic of ongoing discussion among geologists and is referred to as the Great Unconformity. The actual formation of the Grand Canyon is another puzzle that deserves investigation. Scientists from all across the world concur that the Colorado River built the canyon that is visible today. But it's still up for discussion on how well the river completed the job. Is it possible that the rain, snow and wind did more to destroy the canyon than the river did? The answer is not evident. What about history that has been purposefully kept from us though? Not only is it kept a secret to protect historical sites, but it's also kept secret since doing so would contradict the history that we have all been taught. Is it even possible? It starts to get interesting from here. As a result, a curious Norwegian krill who was visiting took pictures of the marks and emailed them to Stephen Rowland, an old friend and colleague. Rowland speculated that it may have been 313 million years old making the fossil trail the oldest vertebrate footprint ever found on Earth. An enormous sandstone formation known as the Mana Catcher Formation is around 314 million years old. Fossilized footprints appeared when they became moist and were covered in sand. The sand was crucial in keeping the fossil imprints preserved for many years. After examining these imprints, scientists discovered two sets of tracks that were clearly visible on the rock's surface. Later, it was discovered that the impressions could date back as far as 330 million years. Roland looked deeper into the footprint analysis and interestingly found two different reptile species moving diagonally over the spot. Scientists are still unsure as to whether the tracks came from two different reptilian animals or from the same animal on different occasions. He also mentioned that one of the animals was about a foot long and walked in a lateral sequence in which an animal moves the left rear foot followed by the left front, followed by the right rear front, and then the right front. This is because it was discovered that the second group of tracks was a little bit quicker than the first after being reviewed. The stunning angel trail traces show how lateral sequence gates were used very early in the history of the Earth. Experts only very lately discovered the Grand Canyon as another historical treasure. Therefore, Chicago, like many other modern cities, has a secret asset miles of underground tunnels that allow commuters to get from one place to another without running the risk of bad weather. There are underground tube systems in Los Angeles, Boston, New York, and Dallas, but a complete city has been discovered beneath the Grand Canyon, which is supposed to belong to the Giants. Do you think that is possible? Envision this. G. Kincaid, an explorer, stumbled upon a massive underground castle while rafting down the Colorado River. He said that the entrance to the mysterious cavern lay at the end of a tunnel of 1,600 meters in length. Naturally, Kincaid was surprised by how difficult it was to get down to the cavern below. About 450 meters down the canyon's sheer wall was where the entrance was made. The area was restricted because it was inside a government-protected zone. The cave's entrance was concealed from view across the river by a ledge. 
The engineering sophistication of the revealed structures in the underground metropolis suggests that its designers were also skilled architects. The main chamber walls were decorated with metal weapons and tablets covered in Egyptian symbols and old inscriptions, and the underground city central access resembled a gigantic camera from which the radii of a wheel emanated. It's a little eerie, right? Another amazing discovery was the mummified bodies that were discovered inside the citadel. Are we referring to real mummies? All of the found mummies were under two meters in height and were covered in black linen. Kincaid claimed to have taken a flashlight photo of one of them, but no images were found. Surprising information about the beliefs of the city's illegitimate giants was learned through further research. More than 30 meters from the room's entrance were tens of meters-long cross-shaped plants and an idol that might have been the main deity of his religious system. They discovered a white camera while on the adventure. According to Kincaid, the Smithsonian Institute's mysterious hieroglyphics may be present on every stone tablet, wall, door, and urn found in the photograph. The tablet's engraving is probably related to the religion of the Southern Arizona people. Similar hieroglyphs have been discovered in the past. Only two animals, one ancient and one contemporary, are shown in the pictorial inscriptions. The largest tomb or crypt, with walls that slope back at an angle of about 35 degrees, is where the mummies were found. There are many mummy levels on them, each with its own hewn shell. A small bench with copper cups and shattered sword fragments was in the midst of each of these spine-chilling tombs. The urns and cups on the lower levels are simple, while the urns on the upper shelves have more elaborate designs, indicating a later period of civilization. It's important to note that no infants or women have been found among the mummies investigated so far. This suggests that the space outside was the warrior's barracks. Despite their best efforts, archaeologists have been unable to determine the kind of society and inhabitants that previously called that metropolis home. However, it is important to keep in mind that according to Hopi Indian lore, until they were slaughtered, their ancestors formerly dwelt in an underworld in the Grand Canyon. Chief Machetto urged his people to flee the underworld, but there was no exit. So he sprouted a tree, drove it through the ceiling of the underworld, and the people of One Heart emerged. In order to get peace, goodwill, and reign for the people of One Heart, they planted grain and corn along Colorado's Red River and sent a message to the Temple of the Sun. That message was never heard from again, but today at dusk in Hobby Villages, old men of the tribe were growing corn and grain alongside Colorado's Red River, which is owned by Red. They are said to have originated in the Upper Nile region, according to one idea, while Asia is another. An Egyptologist here attributed Indian ancestry to the ancient Egyptians. Even though the research doesn't go into great depth about them, the Grand Canyon finds may provide additional insight into human evolution and ancient periods. We sincerely hope that the story is true, and if it is, the archaeologists must take action to discover more hints and evidence so that we can all come to our own conclusions, right? One of the most intriguing discoveries in the Grand Canyon is the Cave of the Domes, a remarkable network of underground caves that is tucked away in the canyon. The limestone walls of the cave were worn over millions of years, creating a series of amazing domes. The accumulation of mineral deposits on the cave ceiling gives these domes their characteristic appearance. Visitors swarm to the Cave of the Domes to view the distinctive Grand Canyon geological structures. There are guided tours available that give visitors the chance to learn more about the science and history of this fascinating natural phenomenon. This one, however, concerns dinosaur bones, which were never discovered, rather than a remarkable discovery in the Grand Canyon. The geological age of the rock layers can be used to explain why there aren't any dinosaur fossils in the Grand Canyon. The majority of the Grand Canyon's rock formations date from the Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras, which were before and after the age of dinosaurs, respectively. As a result, there is little chance of finding dinosaur bones in the Grand Canyon. The rock layers have also experienced significant erosion and geological activity, which makes the preservation of dinosaur fossils much less likely. The Grand Canyon's Coconino Sandstone, a rock stratum that is a fundamental component of its structure, is one of its distinctive geological features. This rock layer, which can be seen in many of the canyon's walls and cliffs, stands out with its distinctive texture and white to light gray tint as one of the numerous unusual objects discovered at the Grand Canyon.
The Coconino Sandstone is thought to have been created by ancient sand dunes that were maintained over time more than 275 million years ago during the Permian period. This geological feature, which continues to draw both geologists and tourists, is evidence of the strong forces that sculpted the Grand Canyon over millions of years. Due to its significant uranium resources, the Grand Canyon has been the location of uranium mining since the 1950s. Numerous mines in the area have produced uranium, a radioactive metal used in nuclear power plants, making it a prominent industry in the history of the area. This number is undoubtedly one of the strangest things discovered at the Grand Canyon, although not quite as fascinating as fossils. The Grand Canyon is abundant with petroglyphs and rock art, as numerous prehistoric cultures left their marks on the canyon walls. They are undoubtedly some of the most fascinating historical findings, even though they are not the most uncommon objects discovered in the Grand Canyon. Prehistoric humans did, after all, live in these regions for many years. These antiquated works of art shed light on the history and culture of those who lived in the region long before European explorers arrived. The earliest petroglyphs in the Grand Canyon are abstract patterns and geometric shapes that date to the Archaic period, some 10,000 years ago. These petroglyphs are frequently discovered in isolated and difficult to reach places. Meanwhile, about 700 lives have been lost on the grounds of this natural wonder since the Grand Canyon was designated a national park in 1919. Some of the most absurd ways to commit suicide have been done at the Grand Canyon. As an illustration, Patricia Astolfo, 36, tried to drive her automobile off the canyon's brink after seeing the movie Thelma and Louise more than 50 times. Her preparations, however, were hampered when the car's suspension became entangled with a rock protrusion. Patricia jumped over the cliff because she was unfazed and landed on a boulder 20 feet below. She managed to crawl to the edge while bleeding and injured, slide off, and fall to her death. Surprisingly frequently, people have driven their cars off the canyon's rim in situations similar to this one. One such occurrence took place in 2009 when Gorge Chiriak, aged 57, left the El Tovar Hotel and subsequently drove his automobile over the south rim. The most peculiar suicide, which occurred in 2004, involved a man in his 20s who leaped from a helicopter while taking a picturesque tour. The other travelers, who were left in total and utter disbelief, remembered the man as being peaceful and normal just before he leaped into the canyon's deepest section, 4,000 feet below. Although homicides do occur in national parks occasionally, the Grand Canyon is particularly accustomed to horrific killings, many of which are still unsolved. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.